rate of reaction is for mature audiences only. So if you can't stand the heat, stay away from the fire. Silver and Black, all you Silver and Black mamas, happy Mother's Day to you. We've got a very special Sunday night presentation. A little Week 15 action in the 2020 Raider Reaction Off-Season Madden Challenge as we've got the AFC is shaking out. We're in Week 15. We've got Rob and his Jaguars currently sitting at 8-5. They are sitting in the second wild card spot. Currently a playoff team coming in to the 2020 Raider Reaction Offseason Madden Challenge postseason. Facing off against yours truly, repping the silver and black, currently sitting with a one game lead at six and seven, holding it down in the AFC West. I also looking like a playoff team this season. We're facing off, it, it's gonna be very interesting. You've got the Jaguars led by Teddy Bridgewater, Todd Gurley, that they, they are a solid team. Mark Andrews was one of the AFC Players of the Week last week. Facing off against, ever since I made the trade, started out one and three with Kirk Cousins at the helm, made the trade, brought in Fitzmagic. He's led us to six and four. We've won two in a row. Looking good, Derrick Henry. He's back from injury. Stephon Diggs still waiting for Keenan Allen to come back. But Zach Ertz leads the league in receptions. My silver and black is looking pretty good. Let's see how things shake out here in week 15. Rob's on a four game winning streak. I'm on a two game winning streak. Both of us have playoff aspirations with only three games left in the Raider Reaction 2020 off season Madden Challenge. Let's get after it. Coach, it's a day for celebration in the East Bay. It is for all intents and purposes the final chapter of what has been a great era of football here in Oakland, California. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Oakland Raiders. This will be fielded at the six. 
Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Ready, ready. Drop deep, drop deep. He'll drop to throw. And complete to Zach Ertz. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll set up to throw. It's complete to Diggs. And they move this all the way down to the nine. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Now a first-time 1,000-yard rusher from a season ago. It's Derrick Henry. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Second and six. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Jaron Brown, the intended target, but now it's third and goal. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense, but in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass, excellent job, way to knock it down. Here we go. Back to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Raiders! Kenny Stills, his fourth touchdown on the year, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Looking sharp on that first drive. These guys, of course, coming off back-to-back -back victories, and you see that kind of advancing into this game, don't you? You certainly do, and when you have a team that doesn't get too full of itself, even though they've won two games in a row, you get the end result that we saw there. That nice opening drive because they're sharp, they're focused, and they're locked into everything that they're doing. Sure, the NFL last year, Tom Gurley. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, Bridgewater. He's got the first down and more past midfield. And finally marked down at the 42-yard line. A good pick up there, 21 yards. First catch of this game, a big one. Of course, he had the big performance last week when he was AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Yeah, but that was so last week, wasn't it? I mean, look at what he's doing now. I think he's trying to exceed what he did in that game and continue to ascend in this season. Tackle made there by Miles Garrett. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Play action now. Bridgewater. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 21. 
Brandon, unless my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, that's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. On first and goal, Gurley. And a short pick up there down to about the nine. situated at the nine second and goal throwing his bridge low. and he's gonna go down sacked right around the 17 jamie collins coming in hard there on the blitz and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage after one seven nothing on ea sports First quarter comes to a close. I'm feeling pretty good. I've good opening drive. Got Fitz Magic dealing to Diggs. Let's see. Rob, Rob's driving on me though. Rob's driving, and let's see how uh, things start out here at the beginning of the second quarter. Back at the 16 now after the sack. Here's third and goal. To throw his bridge wall. That is caught inside the five. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. A big play, but still not enough. Leads to a fourth and goal. The offense is going to stay out there. We'll see what the play call is. They need to find the right one here on fourth and goal. They're running with Gurley. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. We'll take a break and get a report from Oakland after this. Ready, break. The Raider Ready, offense ready, set to ready, get this drive started. Screen, and coming up screen. on their second drive of the game, had the touchdown last time out. Now they have the football back. Chance to really seize early momentum. Feels to me like they had a really excellent week of practice and it all came together. But I'll bet you it got galvanized in the locker room in pregame. Somehow I think the head coach, his oratorical skills were on point. A first down carry for Henry. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Second and three. And Diggs has it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards to pick up there. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 46. A shotgun handoff to Henry. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. They'll look to throw. And he connects with Ertz. 
And he's taken down inside the 30. The pickup goes for 16 and a Raider first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. And not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The Sorry. coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and ten, once again from the 28. Second and ten. They set up the screen for Henry. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner. Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now back to throw. And he finds stills complete. That one will go as a gain of 11. Raiders having a first down as well. They'll run on first down. Henry. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. We'll take a break and get a report from Oakland after this. Here's second and eight. And this is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Stephon Diggs with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Raiders able to extend that advantage. All drives that result in points hurt a defense, but when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Got an open man. It's a noon one. Over 30 yards there. And first downs on three consecutive plays now. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Quincy Anunwa as the first half is winding down as they are now on the board here in the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, headed into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum. Take that good feeling and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Clock at 20 seconds to go in the half as they come up first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. They're going to look to throw. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. Ready, ready. So from the 36 ready, now, go. first and 10. What we got? What we got? What we got? <laughs> They'll throw now on the final play. Going deep for Diggs. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you cross-country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Damn, that was an action-packed second quarter. The big goal line stand, Todd Gurley. He could be out a long time with the ankle injury. That that could be that could be devastating for uh, Rob's playoff run. And then the the big answer down 14 to nothing, and Rob just says, "I've had enough of this shit," and he just comes storming back. Bang, bang, bang. Three plays and a score. It's a one point game, and Rob has the ball after half. Shit is about to get real. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Here's Bridgewater. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Andrews. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Back in his home state, Royce Freeman getting the carry. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Here's Bridgewater. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. David Moore, the intended target, and it's third down. And that right there, his first incompletion of the game, pretty remarkable. So let's start talking about all-time records because with that incompletion, maybe over a two-game sequence or maybe starts a new streak now because Ryan... And down he goes! The pressure getting to Bridgewater. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game, but this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Ten yards on the pickup. It's second and inches. 
the 16 yard line. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Let's get off the field. Check, 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 check. Check 24, check 24. Snap. Running from the gun with Henry. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The throw over the middle, taken in. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one goes for 24 yards. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Now the pass hauled in by Kenny Stills. Add the game here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 38. Eric Henry. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. At the Jaguars' 40-yard line. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Here we go on second and 12. He's got the hookup with Diggs. And he will be taken down with a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Still, uh, the third quarter, back and forth, some defensive stops. And it's still a one-score game, 14-7. to seven. What's going to happen? It's going to be a very exciting finish. I, I can see these are two playoff teams battling out myself with my Raiders against Rob and his Jags. Can Fitzmagic win the third? Can Rob win his fifth in a row? We'll see what's up. Back now in the East Bay. It's the Raiders with the lead and the football here as we get ready to start quarter number four. Here we go. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. It's an interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. The Raiders on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and 17. Looking to throw. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Fletcher Cox in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt.
And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. Back near the goal line, Bridgewater. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this one will be taken up. They'll spot it right at the seven. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Bridgewater. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? Bridgewater now looking to throw on first. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Adrian Claiborne. It'll go as a loss of about 8 as he gets in there to drop him. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Throwing on second and long. Bridgewater. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. He's back to throw. Gets it off to Freeman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. throw over the middle complete it's Andrews and he'll go down but not before getting this inside the 30 the end result 21 yards back to throw and he can't get a throw away he's taken down the sack coming from Adrian Claiborne off the edge the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Back to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Andrews. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 12-yard line. They'll look to throw, escaping the pressure right. He's going to take off with it. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Here's Bridgewater. He's got Freeman here. It's complete. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Royce Freeman with time running out as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we may very well be headed to overtime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Set. 
The Oakland offense about ready to start this next drive. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Back to throw here. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. The all-pro linebacker Luke Keekley right there on the coverage, stride for stride. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Second and ten. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. So this thing is all going to come down to the right foot of Phil Dawson. This from long, very long range. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Ready, ready. 60 out, long. to throw he's gonna let this go back of the end zone and that is incomplete showed off the arm strength there but to no avail rob again closes the half just like he did the first half with a drive down the field put points on the board as the time is winding down at the end of the half forcing overtime rob currently sitting in the second wild card spot I'm currently a division leader in the AFC West. You've got eight and five against six and seven. Week 15, we're going to overtime, baby. Second down. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. And as we said, they control their own destiny now. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. In need of a third and ten conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. They'll look to throw. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 45-yard line. On first down, it's Henry. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Here's second and eight. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. 
So third down coming up. And Charles, I guess the question for me, where does four down territory begin possibly? I guess for me it begins if you have fourth and five or less because you've got to understand your team and know what your play calls are. What do you have that you think you're confident that you can pick up that type of yardage? It might be fourth and three for some teams, but I think anything under fourth and five, they'll think about going for it. They'll look to throw now on first down. And Diggs has it. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. It's a game of eight. Brings up second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Second and two. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Leonard Floyd, the old Georgia Bulldog, finding his way into the backfield. But well, no takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, let's go, however. Let's, go, let's, let's see go. what that's about. Here we go. 70, Indy. And we have you on the edges. Heavy on the edges. Protein spill. You got tight. Go. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters what you <laughs> wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So for the Raiders, they get back to 500 now as the win moves them to 7-7. Seven and seven. And they will hit the road next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they fall to 8-6 and six with the loss. And they'll try to turn it around next week as they head to Atlanta for a matchup with the Falcons. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody. Fitz Magic takes it after the Raiders win the coin toss. Leads my boy, says, no way. I'm going to take him right down the field. And then hands it off to James White. A little sneaky, sneaky up the middle. Game over. Raiders are 7-7. Seven and seven. Now, with a, I think the Dolph Donkeys tied with the Chiefs. So that drops him. So I do believe I've got a full game and a half lead now with two games left in the AFC West. I'm in cruise control now. Heading into the playoffs. Now, got wins against both teams that are sitting in the wild card spot. Mr. Canyon Stone and his Bengals, and Rob and his Jags. So, things are getting interesting in the AFC. We're going to have some more action for you all week long as the 2020 Raider Reaction Offseason Madden Challenge winds down and starts to head into playoff mode. Thank you for joining me. Have a kick-ass Sunday, and have a kick-ass Mother's Day to all you silver black mamas out there. Until next time, I'm out. Peace, love. Raider Nation.